May I make a suggestion that you will probably thank me for someday? It's simply this. The next time you suffer from the pains of a headache or neuralgia, try anison. The reason we suggest this is because we feel sure you'll really be surprised at how quickly and effectively anison gives you relief. Thousands of people who have tried anison say its action is truly astonishing. Anison gives such amazingly quick and effective relief because it's like a doctor's prescription. You know that it usually contains several ingredients, not just one. And anison, likewise, is a combination of medically proven and tested ingredients, not just one. So the next time you suffer pain from a headache or neuralgia, when you want to experience really fast relief, try anison. Try it on the proposition that the first few tablets give complete satisfaction, or you may return the unused portion and the purchase price will be refunded. Take only as directed on the package. You can get it at any drugstore. I'll spell the name for you. A-N-A-C-I-N. Well, Jane and her next-door neighbor, Dorothy, who are driving a bus so that men can be released for the war effort, didn't do well their first week. They were taken off the beautiful Northern Boulevard route and are now driving on Grand Street, where the defense factories are located. This is their second day on the new route, and they're on their way back to the garage with the empty bus. Listen. Well, it happened again, Dorothy. We're 35 minutes late today. I know, Jane, and yesterday it was only 25 minutes late. You can imagine what Mr. Wilson's going to say today. Yes, I know. But I ask you, was it our fault? I tell you, there's so many stops to make and backing up. And so many people going to work in those factories. What did Mr. Wilson mean when he said the defense factories lose man hours when we're late? What's a man hour that made Mr. Wilson so mad? Oh, I don't know. Oh, well, I guess he was being sarcastic. You know, all men think women are never on time. If she says she'll be there in an hour and she shows up the same day, she thinks she's on time. Mm, I can never get ready on time when Frank wants me to meet him someplace in an hour. There, you see, that's called a woman hour, I guess. And a man hour is right on the dot. You know, if you say an hour to a man, he really thinks you mean an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Men have no imagination, no. have they? Well, Mr. Wilson has. He imagines all sorts of things happen to the bus just because we're 25 minutes late. The way he jumped on me when we came back yesterday. Twenty-five minutes late, he said. Yes, but you shouldn't have said, all right, shoot me. He got awfully mad when you said that. Oh, I don't care if he gets mad or glad. He can't fire us. You heard him say the president of the company got his picture in all the papers because he was the first one to have lady drivers. And conductors. Don't forget my part. Oh, Dorothy, you've got a cinch. All you do is take in money. Look at me. You should see my hands when I take off these gloves. Hard as nails. And my nails look like I've been driving a plow and plowing this bus through all that mud. And if anybody could use a mud pack on their face, I certainly could with all this cold wind every time I open the door. You know, I never had a mud pack in all my life, Jane. Oh, I didn't either. My skin is too sensible for a mud pack. But after driving this bus, I don't know. I hate to say this, Jane, but how about quitting? Quitting? Why, Dorothy, get Jane, it. look where you're going. Oh, how did that telegraph pole get out there in the middle of you're everything? You're not driving right, Jane. You can't turn around and look at me while you're driving. Listen, Dorothy, I hate to get sarcastic, but when we first took this job, you said we'd take turns driving. One day I'd drive and you'd be the conductor, and the next day vice versa. But I can't drive, Jane. I told you I'd teach you, and I think I will right now. No, oh, we haven't mm. time. We're already 35 minutes late. Oh, well, it doesn't take time. Now, you sit here right beside me. But Mr. Wilson, Jane. Oh, who's Mr. Wilson? Sit down. Come on. Well, all right, but we've got to hurry. That's one thing you can't do when you're driving. You mustn't hurry. Drive carefully and slowly. See how I'm doing? Yes, but I don't know if I... Now, first I'll show you how to hold the wheel. Come on, put your hands right over here on the wheel. That's it. That hand over there, and this one over here. Yes. That's it, right by my hand. You see? You're steering the car now. I am. Yes. Now, if you want to go to your right, you turn the wheel to the right. And if you want to go to the left, you turn it to the left. And if you want to go straight ahead, you turn it straight ahead. Like this. 
afraid? Well, I'm afraid I might not be able to hold it straight, Jane. Oh, sure you will. Oh, no, I hate to Oh, do... go ahead. It'll give me time to put some power on my nose anyhow. Honestly, with these factory workers and the smoke and the dirty roads we have out here, I must look like the wrath of grace. Is there any dirt on my face? Oh, yes. There's a speck right on your nose. See, I told you where. Right there. On the right. Huh? Little lower. That's it. There. Is it gone? Uh, let me see. Yes, it's gone. Dorothy, watch where you're driving. I'm not driving. I thought you were steering. I told you I was afraid to. Well, now, Dorothy, one of us has to steer. We can't just let the bus hit every car that comes along. Oh, oh that car is stopping. He must be mad. Oh, boy, I nearly hit him. Oh, that was a narrow shave. Here he comes. Now, Dorothy, let me talk to him. Don't you say that we weren't driving the oh, bus. Oh, look, it's Mr. Wilson we almost hit. Mr. Wilson, what's he doing out here? Open up that door. Open the door, Jane. I will, just a minute. Mr. Wilson, what are you doing out here? May I ask what you two are doing out here? We do while we're driving the bus. What are you doing here? You should be at the garage office working. I should... Listen, don't you tell me where I should be. You were due at the garage nearly 40 minutes ago. Only 35, Mr. Wilson. Only 35, Mr. Wilson. 35 minutes means nothing to you, do they? Well, it all depends. If I had a roast in the oven or something important like that. Something important? Getting these war workers to their jobs isn't important to you, I suppose. Hey, Major Harris, this is the bus. Come over here, would you please? Yeah, who's he? He's from the Army. He oversees this whole factory district. Did you find him, Mr. Wilson? Yes, here they are. Come in. Now, maybe you can tell the Major what I've been trying to for the past two days. Well, ladies, do you know how many man hours you cost this district in a day and a half? Fair, please. What? What do you mean, fair, please? Every person who gets on this bus has to pay a fare. Oh, murder. Except Mr. Wilson, Dorothy. We know who he is. What are they talking about, Major? I'm awfully sorry this had to happen. But this is what comes of putting women to work on these buses. I told them... Just a minute, Mr. Wilson. Women taking the jobs of men is what this country needs. Yes, I know, but... It leaves the men free to go into the armed forces. Or take over war jobs. Yes, but it also leaves your factories short all these man hours. We're back to man hours again. Oh, yes. Uh, ladies, I must impress upon you the necessity of getting our defense workers to their jobs on time. Yesterday, three ships arrived late because of this bus you're operating. Do you know how many man hours that is? We don't even know what man, what one man hour is, do we, Dorothy? Well, all I know is that everybody who gets on this bus has to pay a fare. This gentleman is not riding in the bus. Well, we're in a hurry. We have to leave any time now to get back to the garage and check in. You've got to leave any time now. Yes. Is that what a schedule means don't you, to you? Don't you know that every minute wasted mounts up to hours, and every hour means so many man hours lost? Mr. Harris. Major Harris, Mrs. Ace. Oh, please to meet your acquaintance. And this is my friend, Mrs. Gilbert. The here. Major hasn't any time for introduction. No. We've got a job to do. And the schedule this bus has been making is upsetting our entire production schedule. I told them that, Major. Didn't I tell you what Mr. Adams, the manager of the plant, told me? Mr. Adams? Mr. Adams? Don't look at me with that blank stare. That's not a blank stare. Oh, I was thinking. Oh, since when did that set in? Oh, yes. I remember you said something about Mr. Adams. You do, Dorothy? Well, yes, when he was talking about man hours. But I was so busy trying to figure out what a man hour is. I... Oh, yes, Mr. Adams. Oh, it comes back to you. Uh -huh. They remember, Major. Good. Yes. Well, I don't know. <clears throat> well, ladies, uh, Mr. Adams found he couldn't get anywhere with you. So he contacted me. And now I'm telling you that you must keep to your schedule. These workers must arrive on time at the factory. You were 35 minutes behind time this morning. Yes, 35 minutes behind time this morning. Now, ladies, you can readily see what that amounts to in man hours when you multiply that 35 minutes by thousands of workers. Multiply 35 by what? By the thousands of workers in this area. 35 times 1,000. 3 times odd is odd. Three what is she doing? Is I don't know. Oh, say, so you mix me. I'm talking in the middle of my mental arithmetic. Fair, please. Mrs. Gilbert, you leave him alone. Well, the first rule they told me was to collect a fare from everybody. Now, you didn't tell me how many thousands of workers. What? 
how can I multiply 35 by thousands when you didn't say how many thousands are working here? That is a military secret. A secret? Well, what kind of a problem is that? Multiply 35 by secret? I didn't ask you to multiply 35 by anything. I simply said... Why, Mr. Harris, you This is Major say... Harris, Mrs. Ace. Yes, we just met. Why, Mr. Harris, you mean Mrs. to Ace. say... Mrs. Ace, Major Harris represents the armed forces. I brought him here because when I told you what Mr. Adams, the general manager, said, it made no impression on you. Now, the major is trying to impress on you how important it is to save man hours in the defense plan. Yes. It's of the utmost importance, ladies. We of the armed forces appreciate your working in the place of men. But we cannot allow our output schedule to be upset. Do you understand that? You've got to get the bus there on time. Well, we try to, Mr. Wilson. You know what our motto is, Dorothy. Through snow and sleigh, we come your way. Through snow and sleigh? Major, that's no slogan of our company. It's something they thought up. Well, yes, but, but what is sleigh? I don't know. All I want them to understand is that it's important to save man hours at the factories. Do you understand that? I don't think so. Do you know what a man hour is, Dorothy? I know I don't. Well, we've been trying to tell you. And I've been trying to tell you, too. I drive the bus as fast as I can, but there are so many stops, and it's been so muddy these last few days. Look at us. Well, we haven't even been to a beauty shop since we took this job. Beauty shop? Oh, I suppose you'd like the afternoon off to go to a beauty shop. Well, it would be very nice if you'd like. Oh, it would. I don't understand all this beauty shop talk. Well, Mr. Harris, that's a woman hour. A woman hour? Uh, yes. Yes, that's it, a woman hour. What is a woman hour? Well, all you have to do is multiply all the women that go into a beauty shop by the thousands of beauty shops, and you've got... Oh, murder. Well, the girls have been warned by the manager of the bus company, the manager of the war plant, and the representative of the armed forces. They'll soon learn what a man hour is. I want to talk for a moment to those of you who appreciate the distress caused by the pains of headache on your arousal. To you, I suggest a way which many physicians and dentists consider tremendously effective. This way is with the preparation called anison. It gives amazingly quick and effective relief because it's like a doctor's prescription. That is... It's a combination of proven and tested active ingredients. And you know that when your doctor makes out a prescription, it usually contains not just one ingredient, but several. People with a thousand have been given an envelope containing anison tablets by their dentist or physician. So the next time you suffer the pains of a headache or neuralgia, get anison for fast, effective relief. Take only as directed on the package. A-N-A-C-I-N, anison. In handy tins of 12 and 30 tablets, and economical family-sized bottles of 50 and 100. 